Okay. You guys ready for the lab today? Let me just quickly check if the lab was posted. I hope it was posted. I think I did. Yeah, synchronous motor. We're going to do the lab today at three, whoever is going to come and see me. Okay, good. All right, the phone away, because if I put the phone close to my microphone, there's some funny noises happening. My marker, and what I'm going to do, is I'm going to lower the light a little bit so you can see the writing on the board better. There we go. You can still see me, I guess. But now you got to see the board better. All right. So the first example uh, we're going to tackle is, uh, let's say we have a synchronous machine. Uh, And we're going to consider this thing as a motor. All right, so here is the setting for that. Um, and let's see here, what is the speed? The speed we're going to consider our usual 1800 RPM. So that's rotations per minute. Okay. And we are in North America, so the frequency, the line frequency or the phase frequency is 60 hertz. Get into the habit of putting the units in square brackets. It makes things much more clear, much clearer, okay? Now the torque meter shows uh, what did I have here? Well, let's just choose 12 Newton meters. Units are nice. And of course the line, uh, line voltage, let's say our classic kind of a setting here, 208 volts, all right. So what do we have is we have a synchronous motor. Let's see, let's just get some coils here. Uh, here, that's good. So here, that would be about, and they're coming right to that one spot. That's 120 degrees. So the line voltage is uh, 208. So basically this voltage here, that's the VL, which is 208 volts, okay? So that's our line. Now, um, we have all the given that we need, yeah, okay. So what we need to know is, first of all, going to uh, um, number of poles. And I just did that because I didn't want to say P, right? Because P can be mistaken for power. No, let's just get it a bit lower. Yeah. Um, we're going to uh, try to find out what the number of poles are here. Number of. Okay, and we are going to ask you, for example, what is going to be the voltage per phase? Okay. 
which is the voltage per phase. No, 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 no. That would be, that would be too easy, right? Let's see, what do we need to uh, expect? What we're going to expect. Um, what is going to be the current going? Yeah. This current, one phase. All right. So anyone could uh, uh, could start uh, doing any calculations here. Anyone has idea what should we tackle first? We need to know number of poles and what is the current of uh, per phase. You can come on voice, guys. Uh, that's fine. Just like being in the classroom, kind of other thing. Mm -hmm. So that's NS, that's the synchronous speed. First of all, when we're talking about the synchronous motor, one question I'm going to ask you is um, when we loaded, when we changed the load, so let's say we are, the torque meter shows 12 Newton meters. If we load it harder, uh, so we'll make it work harder. Let's say we're going to increase the torque to 14 Newton meters. Is the speed going to change? We're going to get uh, synchronous, we're dealing with synchronous motor. We load it harder. Is the speed going to change? We got one yes. We got one no. All right, so we got 50 50 here. Yes and no. We got two no's. Two no's. All right. All right. Now, why is the speed not going to change? Speed is according to the frequency. There we go. Rodrigo is on the right track here. Okay. How is it that the synchronous motor works? Remember when we were uh, our, during our last lab, we were using the DC motor as a motor or DC machine as a motor. And we were turning the synchronous machine and we were using it as a generator. So we were loading the generator uh, you know, in different ways. We could just put a more load to it, make it work harder or less load uh, at the generator. So make it work not, not as hard, okay? So, um, but that was the synchronous machine used as a generator, right? The, 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 the the force, the mechanical force was provided by the DC machine. So in that case, uh, the DC motor, when it was work, uh, make, uh, made work harder, yes, the speed would change on the DC machine, okay? but it's a DC machine. How is, it that the, um, how is it that the synchronous motor works? Well, these are the stator windings here. And they're arranged in a certain way and they are not moving. And we are providing three phase voltage here, three phase power. Does the stator turn? No, the stator does not turn. What is it that turns that has to do with the stator? When it comes to synchronous machine, what is it that actually turns Forget the rotor, okay, rotor, yeah. Rotor turns physically also, but what does it turn that has to do with the stator, not with the rotor? I should have the question more specifically. specifically. Uh, 
Armature doesn't turn. Armature stays. Stator winding. All right. So we're talking about the stator and the stator winding. There's something that turns. There. Something that revolves. Something that is spinning around. When we have the stationary coils, field winding, or we could just say winding field. Good, Rodrigo, All right? So when we apply the, the uh, three phase power, which means the voltages that are going up and down is in the sine wave uh, format, right? They are going to create a magnetic field, but because they change and they are 120 degrees apart, it is going to make the magnetic field revolving around it. And the magnetic field is going to be strong. Right? So that is what, that's what turns, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the magnetic field doesn't really have any weight to it. So as soon as we apply the power, that magnetic field is going to start spinning right away. There is no going to be kind of a gradual speed increase. That thing is just going to rip right away and it's going to be strong. If we put a magnet bar or electromagnet inside that, that electromagnet is going to try to follow. And it will follow because if, if that magnetic field is strong and this magnetic field is strong enough of the bar, magnetic bar or electromagnet, it is going to lock onto that field. So, um, so by the same token here, if we load that harder, that magnetic field is not going to be affected. That magnetic field is going to be strong and it is going to spin as it was. And it's going to be the rotor's job to keep up with it. And it's going to keep up with it until we put too much load onto it. And then if we got too much load, then it's going to cease, it's going to stop. And that's not a condition that you want because that's how you, that's a pretty good recipe to burn out a motor pretty quickly, okay? That's different from an induction motor. But the induction motor we're going to cover next. But this is the uh, synchronous motor. This magnetic field of the permanent magnet in quotes, because it's not a permanent magnet, it's an electromagnet. We are magnetizing that steel bar or the, 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 the ferret bar. It synchronizes, the speed of that synchronizes with the speed of the revolving magnetic field produced by the coils okay, that are 120 degree, degrees apart. So we know that, uh, and that is called the NS, that's the uh, synchronous speed right here. Okay. Right there. So the synchronous speed stays. Right, so we know that. Okay, so now we are being asked to calculate the number of poles first. Is that an easy task or is it a hard task looking at this, what we have this given here? Any formula that comes to mind? We get four poles. All right, pole number one, pole number two, pole number three and four. How is it that we calculate that? How did you get it? 120 Fn over N. All right, so they're okay. So we can just quickly do that. Number of poles equals 120 uh, times the frequency. And we're going to divide it by the synchronous speed. Right. So we are in North America. 
in Europe, we would have 50 hertz, but in North America, we are using 60 hertz for the most part. Okay. So uh, we're going to have uh, 120 times 60 over 1800. And that is going to give us four. So number of poles, four, we got that solved here. Okay, so that's easy. Now let's see if we can calculate the phase current that flows to each phase. How can we begin to tackle this one here? We need to know the phase current. We gotta get this thing, get this to this thing following some steps, go step by step. What can we find out first that, uh, that it's just going to be easy to figure out based on the formulas that we have so far. It's okay, guys, come on, boys. I don't know, why do I have, I mean, I got a check mark here besides your name. Did you do something to do that? Oh, yeah, I guess that's the, uh, you said, the answer the question as yes to something here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what what can we find out first? What right away? It was an accidental click. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Any ideas of where do we start with this one? You can use the triangle power, find power. We can find the power first. All right, so how do we find the power? E times I, yeah, in three phases. How else can we find out what the power is? But you see, we have the, uh, but the thing is that we don't have the current. Right. There we go. We have, we have an answer, all right? The formula we're going to apply is, so first we're going to find out the power. Power, total power equals, what's the formula we're going to use? It's going to be, we have it, torque times speed over 9.55. Mm -hmm. So how can we get that? What's the torque? Okay, and the, the units have to be, the torque has to be in Newton meters and it is, we have it. So that's 12 times uh, 1800 over 9.55. What does that come to? Anybody give me a number? There we go. 0.78, yeah. So I just, uh, we can just round it off to, let's say, well, the uh, number I got was two, uh, 261.261.8. So we can round it off to two, uh, two, six, two, and the unit is what? 
Okay. So that's the mechanical power. P and P mechanical, yeah, P total, total power here. That's dissipated here, right? So we know the power. Uh, well, I can just say power equals two, six, sorry. Two, two, six, two, is that right? Yeah, and that's what. So we have our power. And that is in watts. So that's the true power. Remember? True power active power and reactive power, and that's the true power. So when we are dealing with the true power, we now actually can use that formula that uh, is uh, voltage equals, or power equals times, uh, voltage times current. So now we know the power. What does that give us? This gives us, the power that is sitting here is dissipated in this system, in this Y connected three phases. So that's the total power of these three coils. And it's the true power. So if it's the true power, how can we find out the power that is dissipated in one uh, phase in one of those coils. Probably, yeah. How can we find out the power that is dissipated? If we know the whole thing, the whole power that is dissipated in this whole thing, and we know this is the true power. So how does the true power relate to one versus three? There you go. Well, we got one uh, root three and then we got one three. If it's a true power, then there is no big philosophy in it. The true power, is just a simple thing. It's just divided by three. Right. So, from this, we can derive power per phase. And what, that, what, was, what is that going to be equal? Two. Yep, just three. Someone give me the number. Yep, got it. 754 watts. So power per phase equals 754. What? And that's our other thing that we have established. I should probably, so I, I, I hate doing that. When it comes to providing scientific data, let's make sure that our numbers involve no guesswork. Okay. So now, we know the power that is dissipated per phase. 754 plus 754 plus 754. It is going to give us the 2.262 kilowatts, right? Or 2,262 watts. OK. 
Can we now calculate the current that is going through one phase, current per phase? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. So how do we get to that? All right. Power, I'm just going to go power equals voltage times current. But we know the power. We sort of know the voltage, but we need to calculate the current. So from that, there's the equal sign. In order to get just the current or just the I, we have to divide it by E, but there's an equal sign. So we have to do the same thing to the other side. So we're going to have power over voltage okay so that's our formula that we're going to use do we know the power here yes we do do we know the voltage sort of okay. How do we know the voltage? We know the line voltage. So we know the voltage between here and here. But that doesn't give us much to work with for now. We need to know the voltage in this branch here. So we know the current. We just need to know the voltage here across this coil. How do we find out the voltage? The phase voltage, we divide it by, we divide the line voltage by square root three. That's a root three now. Right. Why? Well, why delta? All right. Here's a delta. Here's why. The relationship between this here and that here is actually going to be square root three. All right, so what is the voltage per phase? So we're going to go voltage per phase equals voltage line line voltage over square root three. Somebody give me the number, and that should be almost um, given without the calculation. But the yeah, same as delta two y, yeah. Hundred and twenty volts. All right. So now, now we know that the voltage around here is hundred and twenty volts, and we know that the uh, power across that is dissipated, that's dissipated is uh, what? We have 754. Well, we just plug the numbers in. This formula right here. So current equals, 
power. Oh, you know what? Let me just use a little bit more space here so we can be more clear on things. A good idea to write things step by step when we're kind of, so then you get lost, you don't get lost. And if you do, you can retrace your steps. Um, not power, the current, right? Current equals power over E, which equals what? 754, that's per phase. 754 and that's watts and that is divided by what is the voltage 120 it's going to erase that here 120 i'm just going to draw a line so we're just separating that thing here um so what is the current going to be and this is volts What does that give us? Yeah, thank you, Chris. It was 6.28 amps, All right? So we calculated the number based on this given data here. Now, um, we have all done the labs. Does that look like the numbers that we were working with when we were performing the lab? It kind of looks reasonable, eh? All right, so that's the first problem that we tackled. We covered few angles that have to do with uh, uh, with some of the calculations. All right, let me just get rid of things here. That's a lot of ink that we have used. Yeah. I'm going to give you another thing. Thing, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to solve it in one way, and I'm going to also give you a task to chew on. And I'm going to ask you to calculate the same thing, but using a different formula. and see if, see if you can figure out how to apply the other formula. It might be simple or it might be a little bit of a riddle to solve. So I'm going to give you the one way of solving that. And the other way, it is going to get some of your creating creative juices flow. Yeah. All right. Okay, let me just make sure that I give you, yeah, we still have time. Right. Let me just make sure that I give you all that you need to have yeah, for, for this. Here is a magnetic field that we have. And there's one here. Right. And this is north and this is south. So, uh, of course, the magnetic field is going to, I just draw the line here, but they're here just so for the clarity. Okay. All right. Inside that magnetic field, we have one coil. So, let me see if I can just draw it. Yeah. And we have 
wires going there, coming out of that coil. Now here's the rotating axis. Uh, let's see here. All right, it rotates that way. And uh, let's say it rotates clockwise. That's the that's the rotation here. Now we have terminals A and B here. Right. And what do we have? We know, let's say I'm going to give you the length of this coil right here. What did I choose that to be? Well, 20 centimeters, so let's get 0.2. Uh, well, let's put 20 centimeters. And the length of the other uh, one right here, it's also going to be 20 centimeters. So I got 20 by 20. And this here thing turns. It turns at the rate of the rotations per minute, what we have. It turns out 1500 RPMs, RPM, rotations per minute. The strength of the magnetic field, B, equals, let's just, I chose 0 0.7 Tesla. That's a strong field. Okay. Did I give you all I needed to? Yeah. Now, what well, we are trying to find out here that if that's the speed, What is the voltage going to be generated if this thing goes from the standstill position and at that speed, it turns 90 degrees, just like that. So at this speed, if it turns that way, just 90 degrees, just like that. What is going to be the voltage that is generated on that. And what is going to be the polarity? And first, we're going to use the So we're going to do the 90 degree turn, all right? From this position into this position, so we're doing this here. The formula that we're going to use first is A equals B L V. All right, so that's the formula that we're going to use. Can we establish what is going to, what the voltage here is going to be when this thing turns this way at this speed? Mm -hmm. Well, we know the magnetic field. We know the length of this rod, this one rod. Now, 
this formula would be supported by the prefix of this is n, which would be number of turns, but we only have one turn, so that's one. So we're going to skip writing that one. And we're going to uh, uh, have also at the end here is going to be the cosine of theta, which would be the angle between this and uh, the way it's turned and the angle is zero. At that point, it's going to be zero when we consider the speed here. So cosine of zero is one. So we're also skipping that one here. There's one times B of V times one. Okay. If we were doing like 45 degrees here, then we're going to have to include that cosine here, cosine of 45. But let's just for the simplicity of, of this exercise, because the reason why I'm doing that is uh, I don't want to get this thing too complicated because I'm going to ask you to calculate it another way. I'm going to give you the other formula um, and we're going to have to come up with the same result because both formulas are true. Right. So quickly, we know the field, we know the length, do we know the speed and what kind of speed are we looking for? The speed that we're looking for is when this conductor finds itself in this position here, and that is going to be the, this speed because we are interested in that speed here or the velocity is the velocity, we're interested in the velocity of that conductor cutting the magnetic field at the right angle. That's all we're interested in. That's why if we are having it here, we also consider, we also have to uh, uh, find out what is the speed, the magnitude of the speed, not going that way, but going this way, right? So that's what we're interested in. So first we're going to have to find out the speed in meters per second. So that, this here, speed has to be meters per second. All right. This uh, length here is meters. And this, oh, yeah. Uh, and this uh, B is in the uh, magnetic field. We're going to use it in Tesla's. Okay. So all we need to find out to plug in this formula, we need to find out what the speed of this conductor would be once it, once it reaches this point right here, from here to here. In this here, that's, uh, when, it's, when it's like that, so we got a circle like this going, in, this basically is going in a circle, right? It is going in a circle. Right. At this point, the velocity across or cutting the magnetic field perpendicularly is zero, right? And over here is going to be the maximum speed, right? That way. So how do we find out what the speed is here, knowing that we have the, what the that this coil turns at 1500 rotations per minute? I'm going to show you the steps that I did using this formula, and I'm going to leave you with another formula, and I'm going to make you think. Right? So first thing that um, um, I, I, I want to find out is um, this speed right here going that way. Right? Well, we have rotations per minute. So one rotation is the full circumference of the circle. So if we take that circle and we flatten it out in a straight line, we're going to get the length of that, right? So what's the length of the circumference of the circle, right? C equals two pi R. That's what we're going to use to calculate the length of that. Okay? 
So the what is the, going to be the circumference? Here is uh, 20 centimeters, and we need to have this thing in meters. So let's just convert that to meters. So the the the, uh, the diameter here is uh, um, uh, 0 0.2 meters, and the r we we're looking at the radius. The radius is 0 0.1 meters, right? So uh, the circumference of this circle equals two pi uh, times 0 0.1. Okay. So that's uh, uh, 314, 628, 6.28 times 0 0.1. Uh, so the circumference of this circle here is 0 0.628 and that's in meters so what uh, are the lengths you have drawn i can't read them okay so this length here is 20 centimeters and this here is 20 centimeters So that gives us the circle circumference of 0 0.628 meters. So that's revolutions per minute. So that means in one minute, this distance is going to be covered 1500 times. So that's the speed of that, All right? So V equals 0 0.628 meters times 1500 RPM. This M is stands for meters, this one uh, minutes, this one stands for. So what is that going to give us as a number? 0 0.628 times 1500. Let me just quickly, uh, 0 0.628 times 1500. That gives us, did I get that thing right? Yeah, I get the same thing here. I'm just going to follow my sheet here. All right. That gives us 942 meters per minute. But we need to have a meters per second. So we're going to divide that by 60, divide by 60. That gives us 15.7 meters per second. Right. Just get rid of that calculator so I can see myself here. So at this point right now, when that thing rotates, when this coil rotates at 1500 RPMs, we know that the speed at this point is going to be 15.7 meters per second going that way. Can we plug that in now? Sure we can. All right. So E at this point equals B L V equals, can we see that? I'm gonna lower the light here. Uh, what is the uh, B here? That's the 0 0.7 field. Strength of the field is 0 0.7 Teslas times, uh, what's the length? 20 centimeters, so that's 0 0.2 meters. 0 0.2 meters times, what's the speed? 15.7 
meters per second. What does that come to? Two point one ninety eight. Yeah, it goes two point one ninety eight volts. But what is what is that voltage here? That e, that voltage because we're considering that length here. Okay. Well, we also have another length that is here, which is also the same one. But when this conductor is on the top, then that conductor is going to be on the bottom. So the EMFs are going to add to each other because one is going to make the current flow one way and the other one is going to make the current flow the other way. So yes, it's going to, they're going to add. So we have to, therefore VLB, and this is the magnitude, uh, or just going to get the absolute value, VAB, uh, is going to be what? 2.1988 times two, because we have to add that. There's one here and there's one here the other way. Okay. 4.396, 4.396 volts. Across here, across these two points, okay? Now, the one thing is that we need to know which, where's plus, where's minus across this here. So, how do we find out? Okay, the field is going to go this way. So it's, uh, um, um, as far as how much more north is that going to become, all right? So let's say this conductor, if you, um, if you just take a snapshot of that conductor right here, and if you magnify that, all right? So here's the field, north and south, and it is moving uh, the field, the, the, the magnetic field going this way, all right? Uh, then uh, this, this thing here is moving this way, all right? So this side of this conductor is going to meet the field first, and where is that change is going to go? So this side is going to become more north. So the change is going, the change is going this way, all right? And um, that uh, is going to produce a magnetic field or produce a current that is going to cause the magnetic field to oppose the change. So the magnetic field to oppose this change is going to go that way, right? Uh, so we're going to use the right hand rule. Uh, so the magnetic field has to spin this way here. So if we have a conductor, all right, with the field going this way, all right? So this is going to be our fingers that way, all right? Wrapping around that. And if it's the right hand, um, then the thumb is going to point this way here, all right? That's the right hand rule. Which means the current is going to flow this way. So in that here, the current flows this way. There are two ways that we can figure out the polarity right now, using the EMF rule or using the just imaginary resistor. So if we connect a resistor here, that's the voltage drop. The current flows this way here, it flows through that. So in a resistor as a voltage drop, it's going to flow from more positive to the more negative way or from more positive to the less positive way. So that means we follow that this is going to be our positive or this is going to be our negative. Right. Or we can use the EMF thing because that is just creating like a battery out of that conductor. And inside the battery, yeah, 
if the current flows this way, it flows this way. So it's going to flow this way. So it's going to go from negative to positive. So that means this is going to be negative. This is going to be positive. Still adds up. Okay. So we have figured out now, if this one has 200 turns, then of course, we're going to multiply that thing by 200. We're going to get the uh, voltage that was generated at this point, when it turns at that speed at this point. We're almost done. So now, that was using this formula here. And I'm going to leave you with another formula that is supposed to bring you to the same result. So this one here. And I'm going to give you the formulas. Can I use a different color? Is that going to show or not? Yeah, it shows. All right. Come up to this, with the same value using this formula, E equals change in flux over the change in time. Use that formula here. Change in flux over the change in time. So now I'm going to give you this formula here. Now I'm going to give you the formula of how do we get the flux? And what is flux? Flux is the magnetic field that we're interested in the magnetic field that is affecting whatever we are working on. Everything else is magnetic field. We put something in there, the magnetic field cuts whatever it is, and whatever the affected area is, that is considered to be the flux, okay? So uh, the flux, formula for the flux, equals, uh, equals, Field, magnetic field, which we have, times area. And this is in Teslas. This would be in, the area would be uh, meters squared. Right. The area is in squared meters. So that's all I'm going to leave you with. Try to plug, plug the numbers, manipulate whatever we have given, so we can come up with the same thing. It might take you a while to figure uh, how exactly manipulate this whole scenario into this number. And by the time you figure it out, you are going to have a better understanding or better spatial orientation within the environment that we work in. It's going to enter your bloodstream and it's going to stay there. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you might struggle with that, you might not. Mm -hmm. But try to solve it this way. And next time we see each other, we're going to quickly come up with this uh, number here, plug in this formula, and I'm going to go over the steps. All right. So something that uh, you can chew on over the weekend uh, it might bug you a little bit because it could be frustrating or it could be just a very simple thing for you who knows all right now that is the end of today's session and some of you guys i'm going to see today at three during the lab I checked the lab uh, sheets are printed uh, are uploaded uh, or uh, available for you to download so you should have the sheets and uh, I'll see you in B1010 at 3 o'clock whoever is that going to come over right? thank you very much and that's it for today